Welcome to the Rich Relationship Podcast with Gil and Renee, where amazing things happen. Our goal is to help build, repair, and restore healthy relationships. Our primary focus is on the marriage relationship. However, the topics are applicable to the relationships that we value most. Remember, we're stronger together. Let's grow. Well, we are back for this episode of the Rich Relationship Podcast with Gil and Renee, episode 79. Almost at 80. Almost at 80. And you called it the what? It's called the C factor. You know, the mindset that you have when we are in relationships changes over time. You know, it changes and we actually are doing a 180 this time. You know, we are actually going to be talking a little bit something. We're going to be talking a little bit about something that we kind of started with actually at the very beginning of our podcast journey. We actually talked about the fixed versus the growth mindset. But this one is actually going a little bit deeper because we're going to be talking about character and how that lines up with the mindset in individuals and in relationships. I think this is really cool because I was thinking about our first church in Gwen. It was called Living Living Word, no, Word of Life is the name of the church. And your first message that you taught about Gil was about character. And so I think that it's very appropriate that this episode of the Rich Relationship Podcast is going to really help us to dig into the C factor, which is character. You know, we actually love doing road trips. Yes, we do. And the good part about when you do road trips, you actually see new places and you remember how you when you know when you're a kid and you were going to go on a, a go to on a road trip. I you, call it go day. You, you would get excited. Yes. Because of the journey that you're actually going to be going on. But sometimes on those road trips, you come up with delays. You have delays, especially traffic jams. Yes. Or flat tires or you can have a malfunction. And God or, forbid an accident. Yes. You know, and some of those things are caused not by our own doing. And sometimes we are just kind of victims of the situation where we just happen to be at or the Or it's wrong. just life. It's it up is, and down. It is. And, and that's the kind of thing that happens also when it relates to character and in relationships because you're going to be the bystander or the victim of some people's character flaws when you think about in relationships because of things that have happened to them in their past or as they were growing up or just through life. Or developing and, you know, kind of identifying with what related to them and what resonated with them and, and, and how you make a decision. And I think about in the dating relationship, one of the things that I think we make the biggest mistakes is, is that we make a decision about someone based on their appearance Mm -hmm. or their personality. And while their appearance and their personality might attract you, what's going to seal the deal is going to be the C factor. It's going to be that person's character. And that's what we actually are going to be talking about in this episode, because there are times where if you look at what's been going on in the most recent times, whether it's on the news or whatever, Character has been a high point of discussion about a lot of people. This is not a political show. We're not going to talk about that part of it because. But it's all around us. It is. You can see it in everything from the political climate to our um, environmental climate. mm -hmm. Character counts. And when you make a decision to go into a long, a long time relationship with someone and you don't consider their character, you are setting yourself up for failure. So, and as we talk about this, especially in light of relationships, you know, the marital relationship, but also the relationships that you can have with other people, character plays a big role. And I think it's important that we actually identify and define character just so we are all on the same page in context of what we're talking about today. Because sometimes people confuse character with personality. And they are not the same. You know, and they they definitely are not the same because you're you when you think about personality, people tend to be gravitated or they gravitate to someone's personality thinking they are a good person when you may be just seeing an act. You know, I think about this is um, takes me back to when I was a little girl and I remember there was a lady on our street that I really admired a lot because she was always together and she always looked nice. And and she grabbed me and she pulled me to the side and she said, Renee. Your pretty face will get their attention, but how you treat them 
and your character is what's going to matter. It's what, it's going to keep the relationship. And so I think it's the same thing. You may be attracted to someone the way someone looks, or you might be attracted to something that they've posted, but you have to look beyond the post. You have to look beyond the face and the smile to what are the habits that they practice in secret? Mm-hmm. What are the things, you know, one of the first questions in the book is what are your core values? Well, if you want to know someone's character, you can kind of figure that out by understanding their core values. And so it's an important part of the fundamental. We always talk about get the infrastructure right. It's more important for things to be to really be right than for them just to look right. And so character is what really gives you, it's the anchor of the person. And the personality is just the facade of the person Mm -hmm. because your personality can change. Right. And I think your personality is a reflection of your character. Sometimes. And the reason why I say that is because when you think about the essence of who a person is, is going to be demonstrated by the internal things that they hold true to their life. You know, a part of your character is your ethics. That's basically looking at things of your principles, your standards, mm-hmm. the rules that you live yeah, by. Yeah, your values. The values that yeah. you live by, your your morals. Mm-hmm. You know, the Bible talks about it. When you're growing up, you're going to know right from wrong. There comes an age of accountability where you will always already know in the essence of who you are as a person is right from wrong. You know, and that's I'm talking about your morals and then your beliefs. Yes. So your morals, your ethics, and your beliefs. And your beliefs are what you actually believe. And this is your, the best parts of you, you know, sometimes, and then we're going to talk a little bit about sometimes what you believe may not be right. It may not be right, but it's just what you believe. And those things are going to be reflected in your personality. Yeah. And unfortunately, I think that because when, you know, I always, I always laugh, I say about you, still waters run deep. But I think that when we look beyond the surface and we really look at how this person you know, because I would always say your character is what you do when no one is watching you. So your personality can be, it could be a reflection of who you are, but it could just be that. It could just be a, a reflection because in your younger age, those things have to be developed and cultivated. And so the personality you may have when you are, like you and another person may have the same exact personality, but the difference is your character can be different. So I think of a personality like a lens. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just the way you see it. But the character is like the camera. It's what really makes it work. And so I think a part of it we have to stop just looking at, because we do, we live in a very social, visible, knowing things about people we should know society. But just because you get a snapshot of someone, you have to go beyond just that snapshot and look a little bit deeper to really know who that person is. You know, and when you look at someone's personality and I, I wrote this down and I'm gonna read it just like I wrote it because it was as I was looking at this and as we were preparing for the, the episode this week, I wrote it down as your character is made up of you knowing right from wrong and what governs your behavior that you're gonna live by and what you're gonna believe is based on your truth. Mm-hmm. I love that. That's very true. And so when you look at those the essence of all those things, we could be living there's a saying out there right now, I'm living my truth. I'm living my truth. You might be living your truth, but it may not be the truth. Right. Right. And so that's what you have to be really concerned with as far as the person that you are in relationship with. While they are living a truth, you have to know what that truth really is and the essence of it, because you are basically deciding that you're going to be in relationship with this person. And that's important for you to know, because if you don't know, then it's going to be harder for you to untangle some of the things that are going to happen as you get further and further down the relationship. And the best way to get to know someone's personality, their their morals, their character, their values is by spending time with them and asking real questions. I was, Jackie and I were laughing. We were listening to a message. He shared it with me from Creflo Dollar. And he was saying, when you're about to date someone, you need to ask a million questions. And you know, it's not a form of interrogation, but it's a matter of being inquisitive. It's a matter of, I want to know more. And the more you ask those questions, this also going to help you to get to know the person, but it's also going to build, it's going to build trust because if they tell you one thing, and then they do something else, then you can kind of start to evaluate, hmm, 
what you say and what you show and what you do are not the same. And so we have to learn how to take the time to ask the real questions, to investigate. You know, we always say, believe, but verify. There's things that we have to do. And and that's actually a good point, because when you first start out dating, you're always putting your best foot forward and your best image as available as possible. You're dating the representative. Absolutely. But you want, (laughs) but even over time with their relationship, you are, what's going to come out is what are they using to govern their life or lead their life by, you know, most people, it starts out with the natural sense, you know, your own set of rules, your own set of values, your own ethics, your own moral, what you believe to be right. But then like in our situation, we became believers and followers of Christ. So now all of a sudden we're governed by a different set of rules governed than what we had before. You know, now for the simplest way of, of describing, you got 10 commandments. Everybody always thinks about that. That's a guideline. But then you look at now he left the Holy Spirit here to guide us in those things. And we are to compare what we know from the Bible and what we've experienced and what we taught and what we're learning you know, in our churches and, and those things, and then compared to what we had known before. And, you know, I think of a really good practical application of that is I remember one of the scriptures in the Bible says, may the words of your hot mouth and the meditations of your heart be pleasing to God. And I remember when I was first trying to navigate the the new nature and the old nature mm-hmm. and learning how to walk in the new nature. I remember when things would happen, I'd have to stop myself and say, I'm about to let them have it. And I can remember just this peace in my heart. No, that's the way you used to do it. Mm -hmm. We don't do things that anymore. So when you see people changing and growing either towards the good or the bad, it's not instantaneous. There is something you have to reconcile. And even when it goes to that, your, 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 your character determines whether you're going to choose to do what's right when no one is watching versus do what's easy and what's fast. And so at the core of who you are, even I think about even as little, little kids, your 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 character is a part of the way you were designed. It's a it's hardwired. It's just certain people that are they have a, a high, very high um value, a very high moral character. And then other people just don't. And so I think a part of it is that you have to find other people who share your same level of values and character and integrity and even your beliefs, because if not, it's going to make it very difficult because the Bible says, how can two walk together unless there be an agreement? It's important that you find people who are like-minded. And we're going to get a little bit more into that a little bit later in the episode with some, some of the topics of how do you determine where your character and your morals and how that ties into your fixed or your growth mindset. So now we actually take a quick pause in a mission kind of sorted during this episode to just say all the thank you. This was a busy week, man. We did a lot of traveling. Oh, man, we were in Atlanta. We were traveling. We came back. We had a a, a, we want to say thank you to the New Creation Christian Christian Fellowship Fellowship. back in San Antonio, our old church that we used to attend when we were back there. We did the. The Valentine's Day virtual session with them, that was fun. That was a whole they lot. They called it a love in. Instead a love of a shut in, in it was a love in. And, and it was actually a lot of fun. It, it was, was amazing. It was good. And to see all the smiling faces, and we had a lot of fun doing that. So we thanked them again for for allowing us to just present to them and just and share some of the things. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. So. Yeah. And we want to thank Channel 57, WACT Atlanta Live. Um, I'm back, y'all. I am back using that gift that God gave me that I didn't know I had. To host. To host, and it was a great experience, and and it, you just you never know. Um, I did a post today, a show from three years ago when when I used to when I was just a guest on Channel Fifty Seven. The Bible says the steps of the righteous are ordered by the Lord, and one of the things I like to say is that it takes about ten years for an overnight success to actually happen. And so, be patient, be faithful, don't be hard on yourself, be hard at work. And so I'm grateful for the people who saw in me what I didn't see. And I'm I'm grateful to God for the gifts and talents he's given all of us and the, the passion he's given us to serve him and to serve his people. And I'm thankful for my husband, who is my biggest angel investor. He is my biggest cheerleader. He gives my biggest support. He is a blessing to my life. Well, I appreciate that. So, but But it's all fun. It's all about supporting what you're doing and the people on the show and the people who attend the show, people who listen to the show, we just thank everybody because 
we just do this because it's enjoyable, but it's also we want to bring value. That's yes. the, the ultimate goal. And ultimately, thank you to all of you who listen every week and who share the episode. Thank you to all of you who have already purchased your copy of Rich Relationships Refuge, the one is called Workbook. If you have not your copy yet, you got to get it. It will be a blessing to your life. It gives you a playbook. It gives you insight. It helps you to understand how to unpack you before you say, I do. Gil and Renee Beaver's over 30-year relationship is the genesis for the Rich Relationship Podcast, which is designed to empower individuals with the tools, principles, and the community needed to unpack ourselves, our past, and our preconceived notions associated with relationships. Let's get empty and grow together so that our lives will be filled with love and healthy, rich relationships. Now let's go into our show. So we're actually talking about the C factor on this episode of the Rich Relationship Podcast with Gil and Renee, episode 79. And before we actually go into some of the things that we always like to give you guys some actionable things, some, homework. some, some things to think about. But I love the scripture as we talk about character. Romans chapter five, verses three through five says, let us re- rejoice in our suffering, knowing that the suffering that produces endurance and endurance produces character. And character produces hope and that hope does not put us to shame because God love has been poured out in our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. And when I read that and I was like, wow, so character does have a purpose oh, when yeah. you think about it in the, the kingdom minded or the, the eternal value in your life. And even in a secular setting. The best employees are the ones who have high character. Yeah. And and so you have to think about that. And so if you're having those challenging times with your spouse, significant other or your family or your employer or really anybody, you know, and and how character plays a part in it. We want to talk about and give you some of the things to think about, because it actually relates to the episode that we did last year talking about fixed or a growth mindset it feeds directly into that and it talks about where you're in your current state you know we have both a fixed and a growth mindset sometimes you are very open to different things and new things and trying to uh, broaden your horizon then there are some things that may have happened in your life that causes you to have be kind of closed off in some areas and that's what we want to actually talk about now when it takes in relationships take into account into your relationships you know we all have had things happen to us in our past that, or happened around us that that has changed our character but one thing that you have to realize that it's a choice in how you respond to it you know those bad things that actually happen to it you can be a victim or as they say you can be victorious you know mm-hmm. obviously bad things happen and but when you have those things happen to you your character is going to come forth because that's where the growth or the fixed mindset is because when you have those things happen and you are kind of looking for the negative or gravitate to the negative by playing the, maybe you blame, maybe you look at other people and you, you feel that way, or you can take it a different perspective about it and say, okay, that happened, but what did I learn exactly. out of the situation? And I think that, you know, character plays a big part in how you recover because the more the higher your character is, the more resilient you are, the more you're willing to give people ex- to extend grace and the more you're willing to, when someone brings something to you, cause you know, last week's episode, it was, um, do you see what I see? Mm-hmm. And even with that episode, how do you respond when someone tells you something you don't want to hear and your character plays a part in that. And so it's just important that we are always looking at and always trying to grow and change and get better and realize that there are some things about us that God doesn't ever want to change. And there's a lot more things that he wants to change. And so we have to be willing to have to, we're comparing our character. We're comparing our values and our, and our um, beliefs to things that are unshakable and in our life and in our beliefs, the Bible is unshakable. And so you just need to find a reference point for what you're going to build your life on. Are you going to build it? Like we talk about in the book, on fear or love. Everything is a choice and everything has, every coin has two sides. It's just a matter of what side of the coin do you want to find yourself on. And when you have, 
what we like to do, like we said, is kind of bring value and give you some things to think about. And you can challenge yourself. And we always say the longest journey you ever take to growth is the one inward. You have to be willing to look at yourself. And so I'm going to share with you a couple things and you can elaborate on them as I share with them. But a couple of things that you can kind of check yourself and say, okay, do I have a fixed or do I have a growth mindset based on my responses and my actions and my words and my conduct to things when they actually happen? So when something actually happens, do you choose to hold on to them and become a hostage to them? Or do you look at them and think, What can I get out of this? What can I grow from? What can I be better at? Because if you're taking the ladder of that, looking for growth, that's someone with a growth mindset. The one that has the the victimized state of mind where that's someone with a fixed mindset. You know, I want to give an example. Um, You know, we had the book to come out and, you know, there's a lot that goes into writing a book. There's (laughs) a lot of elements and pieces and factors, and it's not just writing. A lot of moving parts. It's rewriting. And the book came out and there were still some errors in the book. Sure. And I was upset and, but I realized, I said, okay. So, cause I had someone to call me and say, Hey, there's errors and, you know, um, can you get them fixed? I said, yeah, sure. You know, thank you. I appreciate you letting me know. I'm grateful for that because very rarely do we have people who are willing to tell us that, Hey, you got tissue on your shoes, but how do you react? Do you take the information and correct it? And move on? Or are you going to then tell the other person what they need to do different? Because that is that is a, a display of your character. When someone brings something to you, an area of growth or something that you don't see about yourself that needs to change, how do you respond? Do you say thank you very much and begin to work on it? Or do you begin to work on them? Right. And so that that is a, that is a display of your character out there. And so we have to make sure that we're constantly always it looking for opportunities and looking for people and relationships that are going to make us better. Yeah, that's actually a 100% accurate. I agree with that. And then the next one is what you just described. That was a growth mindset, you know, and this one that you can ask yourself when something does happen to you, do you choose to feel judged, labeled, rejected? That's a fixed mindset or feel unlovable because of that situation that happened. Like it's your you're the blame or you're the one that caused this type of thing. If that's where you kind of go in your mind, that's a fixed mindset. And that's what you want to move away from because that is kind of holding you hostage to some of those character flaws. Yes, And I think a part of it is that depending on how you, we always talk about loving God, loving yourself. As you begin to love yourself, we listened to a message by T.D. Jake. He talked about, you know, the monkeys were in a cold environment. But then as time went on, they their babies came without tails. And he talked about freezing your tail off. We got to get to the point where, and I even mentioned in the last episode about how I love people, but I don't care what they think. We got to get to the point where we love ourselves and the purpose that God has for our life enough where what people say doesn't. It may it may, it may knock you down, but you can still get up. Mm-hmm. And that comes from realizing your value and, not, and realizing that because you make a mistake or because you do something wrong, it doesn't mean you're dumb. It doesn't mean you're stupid. It doesn't mean that you're not valuable. The mistakes you make are not who you are. It's just a part of the human experience. And so we have to learn how to recover, you know, be resilient. When you get knocked down, Carmen always tell Elijah, we fall down, we get up. Right. And then, so that's the Next one I want to share with you is if your response is understanding, forgiveness, and you want to move on, or even when someone does you wrong, you still wish the best for them, not holding on to grudges, not wanting to get back at them, not wanting to get revenge. Either directly or indirectly or on the like backhanded. Yeah. And because that it's it's tough. It's hard when somebody does you wrong. And you try to gravitate to the wanting the best for them and and asking God to bless them and to move forward. It's it's doable. And that's the one someone of a growth mindset. But you always want to learn from it because it's going to make you better. And a part of it is understanding what are your core values. One of my biggest core values is you will reap what you sow. Oh, absolutely. So if you live your life understanding that everything that you put out is going to come back to you, and one of my mantras is I'm responsible for how I treat people, 
not for how they treat me. And that's something I had to learn because when you grow up in an environment where things happen to you that you have no control over, you have to ask yourself, well, what can you do with that? You can only do something with your part of it. And so it's important that that's why, you know, in the work where we ask about what are your values, it's so important that you have those things that you know what they are, because when you're confronted with a chance to go against those, and then, you know, another question is, well, who do these values Do your actions match your values? Mm -hmm. Because you have to make sure that not only do you have values, but are you living your life? And so your character is developed by you making sure that you're living your values, you're living your ethics, you're living your beliefs. Because if you just have beliefs, but you don't live by them, then they're really not yours. Right. And And so a part of it is just living them out. And those who are followers of Christ, the Bible tells us in Matthew chapter five, but I say unto you. Love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. That's telling us how we are to conduct ourselves. You know, if your past response would have been like, oh, I'm going to get them. I got something for you. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to get them. Well, we don't do that anymore. Right. You you don't have the right to do that anymore because we have been given a mandate to do something different, to behave differently, which is in Matthew chapter five. So even if this finds you in a, if you heard that and you're like, no, man, (laughs) well, you can't argue with me. It's not the gospel according to you. (laughs) No, no, no. I'm I'm just sharing with you what I read in my word. So that's just one of the things that you have to think about because when you're in a relationship, it's a tough area that you're going to be come across at different times, you know, especially there is no such thing as a perfect relationship that Uh is without troubled waters or circumstances come along. And differences of agreements, opinions and different value. A part of what I, what I love about our relationship is that we give each other the freedom to be human. And I don't have an expectation that you're perfect and you don't have an expectation that I'm perfect, but we know that we can be broken together. And we can grow. Mm -hmm. And that's the idea of a successful relationship is when differences happen and circumstances happen, you learn from it, you grow from it, and you don't, where you you don't, your your spouse or your significant other doesn't become your adversary. Exactly. They become your ally. That's the person you want to gravitate towards so we can come to a resolution. The people who tend to have difficulty in their relationships are those who have not learned to embrace and understand the differences that happen in relationships that are just going to naturally happen. And they don't learn to move through them or resolve them or get past them. And they just think the other person is just broke. Right. And and a part of it, I think, is that when we always talk about the two becoming one, it does not mean you're going to be the same because while you and I have different personalities, our character, our beliefs, our, our values are the same. And so when you're going through this whole dating, yeah, he might be fine and she might be fine and he might drive a nice car and she might, but those are just external things. Mm -hmm. Look beyond that. Do you have the same values? Do you have the same beliefs? Do you have the same ethics? Those are the, those are the anchors. Those are the things that will really make your relationship sustainable and not just in dating, but in relationship with friends and family too. And that's 100% true. And while this episode has actually been very, very interesting, we can kind of, we can, we can keep going, man, because when you start talking, that information start flowing in. All these years. There's still so much we can actually talk about with this topic. But a lot of the things that we're sharing with you are with things that we've already wrote down in the book. We we've actually put it in a workbook that you can take and and go a little bit further, a little bit more internally. Or you can have us do a one on one session with you. Yep. We can do um, church events for couples. We can do individual dates. Um, dates for people who are dating. Yep. And it, it's it, been really help. successful right now with the virtual sessions. And, you yeah. know, that's been a lot of fun. So we kind of got that down a little bit. Yeah. Well, we so really we love can, it. It allows us to go everywhere and still be in one place together. You know, so just remember, though, when you come to your relationship, success in the relationships come from you having a conscious knowledge of how we need to change in areas of our lives and how we have to be willing to accept each other and our changes and our differences and navigate and move through those because that's where the real growth is actually going to come. Yeah. So I want to give you guys some homework. Okay, go ahead. I want you all to write down what your values are and you can send them to us and share it with us in social media and Instagram, or you can send it us an email at richrelationships.us at gmail.com. Write down what your value. You need to know what your values are. Everyone's always talking about writing a list about what you're looking for. 
I think that you should write a list about and then become that list. So find out what are your values. Write them down. And share them. Share them with us. Because it all is going to make us stronger together. And it helps you to have accountability. Because we are stronger together. Let's grow. Thank you for listening. Thank you for your investment in time. Remember to subscribe to the show and hit the notification icon to be notified when new episodes are posted on the podcast platform that you're listening from. Or you can always find us on our website at richrelationshipsus.com or our YouTube channel, Rich Relationships with Phil Renee. If you found this podcast helpful or you think it could help someone that you know and care about, please pass it along and share it with them. And also, you can always send your questions and comments to richrelationships.us at gmail.com. This is a weekly podcast, and the new episodes are going to be posted on Monday by 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. Remember, we're stronger together. Let's grow!